heating and cooling curve. Well, on this graph, on the y-axis, we can see the temperature in degrees Celsius. It represents the temperature of our substance. And the, on the x-axis, we see the amount of heat, the amount of energy put in a substance. As we see the increase in the amount of energy put in the substance, we also see the increase in temperature. During this period of time, during this period of time, and over here as well, we can observe definite increase in the amount of uh, in the temperature. Remember that we define temperature as the measurement of average kinetic energy in a substance. And as we're putting energy in, we logically expect and definitely see the increase in the amount of kinetic energy. But we also see two interesting plateaus over here and over here. When while we continue to put in considerable amount of energy in, it seems like it's not affecting the amount of kinetic energy in the substance at all. So what's going on there? During this period of time, and over here as well, while the heat is absorbed by the substance, it's not converted into the kinetic energy of the substance. It is converted into potential energy of the substance. As well as over here, once again, the heat is absorbed, but it's not converted into the kinetic energy of the substance. It is converted into potential energy of the substance. The energy cannot be created or destroyed, so the heat that is absorbed during this period of time is not disappearing. It just converted into something that cannot be measured by the temperature. The temperature only measures the amount of kinetic energy in the substance. So during this period of time, our substance is melting. So the temperature at which our substance is turning from one physical state to another, in this case from the solid state into a liquid state, is called melting point. Or freezing point because during this period of time if energy is put in a substance our substance would be melting turning itself from the solid into liquid if on the contrary the energy would be leaving our substance it will turn from liquid to solid during this period of time our substance exists in two physical states some of it already in gases for, uh, in liquid form and some of it is still in solid form over here we see a similar process, but it occurs at high temperature, it, it represents our boiling point. The temperature at which it occurs represents our boiling point, our condensation point. That all the heat that is absorbed during this period of time is actually converted into potential energy of the substance. Or if the energy is leaving our substance, then we would see how our substance is condensing getting from the gaseous state into the liquid state. And during that period of time, there is no change in the amount of kinetic energy, but there is definitely change in the amount of potential energy inside of the substance. So to recap, on these three instances, we can observe the change in the amount of kinetic energy as we put energy in the substance. Or if energy is leaving the substance, we will see the decrease in temperature. Consequently, it is would represent uh, the decrease in the amount of kinetic energy in the substance. Over here on these two plateaus, we actually do not observe any change in the amount of kinetic energy. But during this period of time, the change in the amount of potential energy inside of the substance takes place.